Greetings, fencers. So today we're going to look at three elements you should be conscious of when fainting or failing. Now, deception is an extremely wide variety of things from moving feet, body posture, breathing, eye contact, and you'll be able to learn many of those things from experience. It's almost limitless possibilities. But today we'll look at fainting with attacks to bring up a parry so we can attack somewhere else. The most common idea when someone says fainting. There are three things that should be learned in order to safely faint. The first is observation. Before you faint, you should gather information. This can be done with cuts out of distance or controlled cuts to long point, either without stepping or small steps or offline steps. If it's not harming your opponent, you need to stay at a far enough range. You want to look for how they move their sword, which direction, how quickly, how many times they'll do it, how close will they let you be. You should know their favorite guard position, hanging, ox, plow, crown, jumping back to long point. When they feel threatened, where do they like to go? You should try and get some idea of what they'll do either from previous exchanges or those seconds leading up to the onset. The information will be different from person to person, which changes which feints will work. The next thing that you have to look at is distance. When you're planning on something that won't harm them, you shouldn't be stepping in range generally. This changes from feint to feint, but is something you have to modify from a standard attack sequence. Different manuscripts have different ways to account for it. Meyer talks about stolen or broken steps. Some manuscripts say a feint should be done with just the sword and the legs only move with the real attack. A common thing seen is thrust without stepping, then circle to a cut in another opening. Here's an example of a basic 2 overhaul feint, done in standard range, I can easily be hit in the arms, but if I increase distance and make the same movement, my arms are saved and I can still strike. The last thing is cancelling. A good fainter should know when to cancel to either get out if it's not safe, but also not over faint. If they don't properly cover or don't react, just make the feint real and strike. I have intended to feint the thrust many times and sometimes they don't fully cover the center line, thinking I'm out of range, and so I finish the thrust. Feints are for people who over parry. If they are not, you don't need to feint. These are just three small elements to observe while practicing. Experience is one of the best helpers for getting better at fainting. There's tons of different elements and it's something that doesn't have one way answer. Everyone is different. Keep exploring how people move and your system's advice. Fainting shouldn't be your primary component of combat. It's something that just complements your system. It can be mid-exchange, not a leading cut. Just make sure you're always reacting and building them based on your opponent's reactions. Your goal is to be a good salesman. You have to sell the feint, and it's always different for each person. Sometimes you have to step, sometimes only a small sword flick. If you see them doing something multiple times, take advantage of it. Notice the patterns. There's a link below to Martin Fabian's video that looks at patterns and some more specifics on fainting. Thanks for watching, keep studying, keep practicing.